wish I could go in your place in this. No, you don't. Nah, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, it's I was gonna really say. Gonna hurt. Oh, ooh. Starting. Wow, look at this. Love the steampunk gothic oh. look of this. <laughs> There'll be a time, Lord, come in. <laughs> okay. Oh. What was that? No. Hello. We are in deep space. Right. Very, very deep. Ooh, look at that glow. And somebody's knocking. <laughs> He's excited. Go on then. Oh, come here. Come here, you scrumptious little beauty. Oh, he knows. He knows the meaning of this then. Time Lord emergency messaging system. In an emergency, we wrap up our thoughts in psychic containers and send them through time and space. Uh, and there's a living Time Lord system. Yeah. And it's one of the good ones. See that snake? The Ooh. mark of the Corsair. Fantastic bloke. He had that snake as a tattoo in every regeneration. Didn't feel like himself unless he had the tattoo or herself a couple of times. Ooh, she was a bad girl. Oh boy. Kind of looks like the Ouroboros, right? The eternal cycle of life and death. Checks out. Checks out. <laughs> it's as if the Matrix, the soul of the TARDIS, has just vanished. Oh, oh, they stole it. They captured it, stole it, or... Where would it go? No. The TARDIS? How about that? How exciting. <laughs> There's our answer. <laughs> New gaming! Ah, this is the episode. Oh my goodness! Ah, it makes sense now. The look—it already makes sense. Neil Gaiman, big fan. You're my thief. She's dangerous. The guard is out. You're my thief. He stole the TARDIS, right? Why am I a thief? What have I stolen? Me? Are you going to steal me? You have stolen me. You are stealing me. Oh, pretenses are difficult, aren't they? Oh. Uncle, I'm everybody's. Uncle. Is that why Uda's nephew? You will be angry. The little boxes will make you angry. Huh. Boxes. I'll just see if there's an off switch. I love the look of this. The color grading here. Look at this. Oh, hello. Doctor, what is that? Oh, Old friend. All right, it's an Ood. Ood's a good love an Ood. Hello, Ood. Love an Ood. House from repairing him. He's house repairing all of us. Huh. You are receiving this message. Please help me. Send a signal to the High Council of the Time Lords on Gallifrey. Whoa! I am still alive! What were those voices? Time Lords. Time Lords, right. Somewhere close by, there are lots and lots of... Time Lords. Jeez! Corsair. Huh. Bit of foreshadowing there, perhaps. Let's keep that in mind. And do my will. You are most welcome, travelers. Doctor, that voice, that's the, um, the asteroid talking. Yes. Tell them why I had to. You want to be forgiven. Hmm. Don't we all? Ah. Uh, oh, boy. Screwdrivers in your jacket, yeah? Yeah, it's around somewhere. Have a good look. <laughs> oh, man. Ah! Yeah. Just admiring your time nor distress signal collection. I had an umbrella like you once. Oh, no. It's been. It's been a great arm for me, this. Corsair. He was a strapping big bloke, wasn't he, Uncle? Big yeah. son. You said they'd make me angry. How did you know? Oh, it's my thief. Who are they? Hmm. It's a TARDIS, right? It's about time. <laughs> He's not trusting us and has been emotional. This is bad. This is very, very bad. We travel. I go. <sighs> I'm the TARDIS. No, you're not. You're a bitey mad lady. The TARDIS is up and downy stuff in a big blue box. Yes, that's me. And the first time you touched my console, you I said... I said you were the most beautiful thing I'd ever known. <laughs> and then you stole me. And uh... I stole you. What makes you think I'm 
did you think I would ever give you back? <laughs> My TARDIS! Yes! My doctor, we have now reached the point in the conversation where you open the lock. Oh, I like this. Oh, man. <laughs> Whatever happens, at least we're together. And we're in the TARDIS, so we're safe. Mm. Yeah. You're half right. I mean, you are in the TARDIS. It is Neil Gaiman, isn't it? Sorry, uh, do you have a name? 700 years, finally, he asks. So what I call you? Think you call me... Sexy. <laughs> oh, he does. He has. Only when we're alone. We are alone. Huh. Come on, you sexy. <laughs> Alright, sell some lens flares. Valley of half the TARDIS is. Cool. Oh. Are you thinking why I'm thinking? I'm thinking all of my sisters are dead, that they were devoured, and that we are looking at their corpses. Hmm. Ah, sorry. No, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> Careful, Rory. I know you're prone to dying every now and then. <laughs> and I just want to say, you know, you have never been very reliable. And you have. You didn't always take me where I wanted to go. No, but I always took you where you needed to go. Uh... You did. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could always talk? Even it would be. Inside the box? You know, I'm not constructed that way. I exist across all space and time, and you talk and run around and bring home strays. Oh. You've been hours. No, I haven't. Sorry, sir. The mind games. The Do you ever wonder why I chose you all those years ago? I chose you. You were unlocked. Of course I was. I wanted to see the universe. I stole a time lord and I ran away. Ha. And you were the only one mad enough. Right, perfect. No, hang on, wait. Hey, it's a rebel tie. Right? Oh, it's usually red. Or is it blue? It's blue usually, isn't it? No, it's red. Yeah, it's red. Usually. Oh, wow. <laughs> How could you do that? How could you leave me? How long has it been here? 2,000 years I waited for you and you did it to me again! I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I've got nothing. It's a great oh, shot. beautiful idiot. You have what you've always had. You've got me. <laughs> Love that. holding her stomach? Oh, I thought she's holding her stomach. Which one's Amy? Orange one? The pretty one? Ah! Rory, what's wrong? It's like I'm getting the, <laughs> the pretty one. Hello, pretty. When you get there, use the purple slider on the nearest panel to lower the shields. The pretty one? <laughs> this is, well, she's my TARDIS. Except she's a woman. But she's a woman, and she's my TARDIS. She's the TARDIS. And she's a woman. She's a woman. <laughs> and she's the TARDIS. Did you wish really hard? Shut up. Not like that. The lovely old unexpected me. The big question is now you're here. How to dispose of it? shot. I could play with gravity. <laughs> we are in your universe now, Doctor. Why should it matter to me in which room you die? I can kill you just as easily here as anywhere. Fear me. I've killed hundreds of Time Lords. Not this one. Fear me. I've killed all of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The first hour. Look at her go. <laughs> they are the inside. See how split your stop. That's your problem. Ah. Size of a planet, but inside you are just so small. Make it stop. I'll always be here. But this is when we talked. And now even that has come to an end. There's something I didn't get to say to you. I just wanted to say it. Heather. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. It's so very, very nice to meet you. Oh. <sighs> Please. I shall want you to. Wow. Oh. What did she say? 
the only water in the forest is the river? She said we'd need to know that someday. It doesn't make sense, does it? Not yet. It'll make sense, yeah, at some point. It's always you and her, isn't it? Long after the rest of us have gone. Mm. Boy and his fox off to see the universe. Well, you say that as if it's a bad thing. I love this music. Doctor, do you have a room? Are you there? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> that was great oh let me pause that all right folks that is a damn good episode that is of course you know neil gaiman's doctor who of course it was going to be good uh you know i knew about uh neil gaiman having an episode on the show at some point but again i didn't know the exact episode this happened to be that episode and yes Yes, you know, it lived up to all the expectations. Um, uh, and then some, really. I mean, I thought that was a fantastic episode. I mean, it's easily one of my favorites of the show. Um, and yeah, it's easily one of the best of, uh, you know, the Matt Smith era as well. Um, I mean, you know, speaking of Matt Smith, he is in fine form here, folks. Fine form. You know, this could be a contender for a series best performance right? Uh, it really can be. It really can be. I mean, you know, uh, the range uh, on, you know, on display throughout this episode uh, through Matt Smith, it's just phenomenal, I think. Um, and the subject matter, wow, the subject matter. I mean, you know, if you really think about it, it's it's really quite basic. You know, it's, it's a simple idea. You know, what if the doctor actually gets to meet and speak with the one companion that's always been by his side? This whole time, the TARDIS, right? Now, you know, the 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 notion or the idea that the, the TARDIS matrix is a sentient being, it's not new, right? They've established that already. So us, the audience, knows this now in, in New Who, essentially. Uh, that's the only one I can speak for, of course. But I think it was beautifully executed, right? The subject matter, it was beautifully executed here. And, of course, I'll get into all of that. But first, you know, I've got to say, Neil Gaiman, wow, I thought that was... Uh, a really tight script that was a beautifully written episode uh full of just <laughs> full of just you know fantastic dialogue like i can think of like five or six different moments that are in my mind right now right quotable dialogue i'm sure i'm sure you know uh doctor who fans have been quoting this episode for years to come from that point on since that episode aired and i'm going to be doing the same thing wow i mean <laughs> there's a plethora of fantastic lines of dialogue in this one but yeah you know uh, i love the subject matter love the plot of course i loved how gaming handles the plot uh you know it's clever uh again full of beautiful dialogue um yeah and then you know of course beyond that the setting i love the setting uh the tone right um right from the beginning even before i knew neil gaiman wrote this episode you could feel the distinct tone of this and feel of it right it didn't feel generic you know sometimes some of the doctor who episodes you can almost immediately kind of you know clock um a distinct look for an episode right sometimes there is a generic look uh, but then sometimes there's this type of feeling right from the beginning and like i mentioned during the episode you know i love that steampunk gothic uh look to it all uh and of course the characters the really unique uh, one episode characters really played their part as well, I think. Memorable characters, you know, uh, uh, uncle and auntie, and you've got <laughs> Ood, nephew, you've got Idris, who goes on to kind of personify the TARDIS, right? Uh, and I think it was beautifully personified, really. It really was. And, I, you know, I love, I just love the chemistry uh, the Doctor and uh, Idris or the TARDIS had or, the, or those two actors had or those two characters had, right? You know, essentially, at points, it felt like a married couple. The bickering, the back and forth, and the immediate, you know, kind of uh, forgetting about the bickering. Um, all of that. I thought it was just, uh, I, I thought it was so good. I thought it was so good. It was so great. Um, you know, good writing, really good writing. Yeah, it's noticeable, isn't it? It really is quite noticeable. Um, you know, not, that's not to say I enjoyed every single aspect of that episode. You know, perhaps... Uh, some of the Amy and Rory stuff in the corridors, uh, though, of course, at first I was quite excited to see 
more interior shots of the TARDIS, right? Uh, though, of course, it only ends up being those long corridors because it's always kind of felt like there's these endless corridors. Of course, I see them, but also, you know, endless amount of rooms, you know, uh, specific rooms. Um, so, yeah, you know, I thought maybe I'll get to see a bit more of that, but it ends up being just the corridors. But how about old Rory? Wow. Um, to me, that was actually really quite scary. <laughs> um, not scary, but really unsettling to see him like that. Um, again, you know, it's all about the mind tricks here. It's not really happening, but, you know, Amy seeing that, uh, and, you know, Rory telling her, you know, uh, 2,000 years, right? He spent 2,000 years for her, uh, that all that time ago, and now she's done it again. Of course, none of it's real, but still, it was just a jarring sight. And then, of course, there is a dead Rory as well, uh, right? The, the, the remains of a dead Rory who kind of loses his mind and becomes quite resentful and hateful of Amy. <laughs> the graffiti all over the walls. But again, just the mind games, right? So yeah, you know, maybe that whole aspect wasn't uh, the strongest part of the episode, in my opinion, at least. But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter, you know? Uh, that's just like a small nitpick almost, given the rest of the episode. But circling back to some of these... Um, uh, you know, one episode characters, these misfits, essentially, right? Uncle, auntie, and uh, Ood nephew, who's being used. You know, like I mentioned, Ood, they just can't seem to catch a break. You know, they're always being used. Um, but, and there's Idris, right? Um, who's, of course, on her last legs as well before getting personified as the TARDIS, right? Uh, the, tar the TARDIS matrix, essentially, the soul. Um, yeah, um, you know, at first, the, I found them really quite creepy, right? Um, again, I love the tone of this. I really did. Uh, had a really steampunk, gothic, unsettling uh, feel to it. And also, I've got to say, you know, the photography and the color grade specifically. Yeah, it really set the tone, really set the mood. But, you know, that being said, I think as the episode kind of played on, you know, these misfits, they kind of became endearing. You know, uncle and auntie, you know, I, I felt really bad for them as they're about to die, and they do end up dying, you know, I really felt quite sad to see them go out like that, right? Um, um, and, you know, speaking of uh, other great moments, uh, you know, beyond it being just a fantastically written episode, you know, there's all these tiny little, like, moments in there, right? Um, be it things like the Corsair, this Time Lord, right, uh, who in his final form was this big fella, apparently, right, according to auntie and uncle, um, because she got his hand and he got the kidneys. But yeah, I love the idea of these Time Lords, these, you know, iconic, legendary Time Lords outside of uh, the Doctor, the Master. And of course, the Doctor knows all about him, right? He even called him one of the good ones. Um, so I love it. I love anytime there's like a lore drop, Um and I love that he always has his Ouroboros tattoo in every regeneration, as the Doctor mentioned. And of course, you know, that makes perfect sense, right? The eternal uh, cycle of life and death, the Ouroboros. Um, so yeah, you know, I love that. You know, that character, even if it was mentioned just in passing, you know, in my mind, I just kind of imagined all of a sudden so many different possibilities right? Storylines and all that, you know, a character perhaps like Captain Jack, right? That could come in. Now, you know, I'm just kind of fanboying almost, right? Uh, hypotheticals, because I know it's highly unlikely. I mean, it is unlikely, right? Given that he's dead. But, you know, again, you can imagine, right? Uh, imagining is fun. <laughs> but yeah, I certainly had quite a distinct uh, image of this Time Lord in my mind. God damn it, now I'm not going to get over uh, the Corsair and how cool this Time Lord must have been, right? God damn. Uh, but let's move on, let's move on. You know, it's these kind of really cool moments, you know. It's just sprinkled in there, but it, it really intrigues you, doesn't it? But also, before I forget about this, you see there's clearly this setup moment, right? Uh, some sort of foreshadowing going on because there's quite a recognizable name drop, River. I believe the line of dialogue was the only water in the forest is river. Now surely that must have something to do with our river song, right? Uh, so let's keep that in mind. Let's put a pin in that. I'm sure that's going to come up. Uh, you know, if I've learned one thing from series five and uh, of course the setup from series six as well, a lot of these things are being set up in long form storytelling format, right? So certainly let's put a pin in that. Um, and, you know, that final, you know, goodbye, essentially, though, you know, the most beautiful thing about that is it's more of 
a first hello, right? That simple, that simple notion of just hello, hello, my doctor. Wow, that is, that hits you, man. That hits you hard. And you see the doctor, it, you know, it's rare to see the doctor like that. Uh, and, you know, this is one of the reasons I was mentioning uh, Matt Smith being in rare form, right? Because he just delivers on all fronts right till the end. Um, you know, him clutching his hand, I, I just felt, oh, that felt so real to me, right? Him being teary-eyed, clutching his hand, almost as if it's above his heart, right? Or one of his hearts. And then, you know, as he slowly looks to both Rory and then he looks to Amy and he kind of turns, right? Um, wow. You know, I really felt that. He he really sold that. Um, it was a heartbreaking moment. And then, of course, you know, him saying, please, I don't want you to. I believe he's about to say, I don't want you to go, right? Wow. Wow. Uh, beautiful moments, right? Um, it, was, it really was heartbreakingly beautiful. Um, his acting in that moment. Um, you know, I've said it all. I've said it all. I, I adore Matt Smith in this role. He is just so damn good in this role. I feel like if at this point people didn't like him, I think that must, that must be a preference thing, right? Because there's no fault in his acting, right? There's just no fault in his acting. Um, and it's fine. Uh, you know, I totally understand. I totally get it. If people don't, maybe didn't like Matt Smith or his take on The Doctor, um, that's fine, you know, um, there's a reason people have their own doctor because different people gravitate towards different doctors and different takes on that doctor, right? Uh, some people latch on to Eccleston, some people latch on to David, some people latch on to Matt Smith, Capaldi, uh, perhaps Jody, and of course, you know, before any of this, some of the older doctors as well. But, you know, again, I can only speak of New Who. But, you know, going back to this, uh, intriguing relationship that is the TARDIS and the doctor, right? You know, it's been established that the Doctor has a lot of love for the TARDIS, right? That's a given. But now, you know, I love how he knows that the TARDIS loves him back as well. It has the same, um, uh, you know, level of trust in him, right? Yes, they bicker uh, like any like any good old couple, I suppose. But, you know, you know they have trust. They have love for each other. Um, uh, his love for the TARDIS is reciprocated, essentially. And I love that he knows this now. But, you know, again, that that was ugh, such a heartbreaking moment, right? Even though they've been together this whole time, that first meeting and last meeting, right? The first and last time they kind of get to speak. But it was so beautifully executed, right? Emotionally resonant. Um, uh, and the actress uh, playing um, Idris or the TARDIS, I thought she did a fantastic job as well. Again, forgive me, I don't know her name. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll find out. Um, but yeah, you know, great job. Um, you see she's kind of unhinged, right? Off the wall at first. Uh, a lot of fun moments. Uh, it provided for a lot of fun and humorous moments. But yeah, you know, that right there is a great duo. Uh, the greatest partnership, uh, perhaps. You know, the Doctor and the TARDIS. Uh, um, so, you know, even though the Doctor is lonely, right? Uh, and they certainly played that up, or they, they leaned into that in Tenant's Run, earlier as well in Tenant's Run. The Lonely God, right? Um, he's always had the TARDIS, right? I think this, uh, essentially, this personification uh, as a human, maybe, uh, of the TARDIS really is going to drive that point home for the Doctor, right? That he's never really truly alone. Uh, this companion, the companion that's been by his side um, the longest is always there for him, right? Always there for him. They might not be able to speak, but she's always listening. She's always there as well, right? Love that moment at the end. Um, you know, he kind of tries to speak to her and of course, you know, he gets a reply, um, a different type of reply, but a reply nonetheless. And then, you know, he starts dancing around, love seeing him like that. But I love how he kind of flips, uh, one thing on its head, essentially, right? Up until this point, it's always been, oh, the doctor stole the TARDIS, right? Uh, and he maintains that he just borrowed it. Uh, and he kind of gets, uh, confronted about that by the TARDIS itself as well, right? Um... It's, you know, it's more of like a joking manner, but still, he gets confronted about that borrowing stance he's had this whole time. But I love how it flips it on its head. And it appears that, you know, the TARDIS played just as much role in picking the Doctor, right? Um, <laughs> and, you know, I love this line of dialogue here. Um, again, a plethora of brilliant lines of dialogue in this, but, you know, how Idris or the TARDIS mentions, do you think I was ever going to return to you or give you back, Right? Um, so I love that, you know, both the TARDIS and the Doctor kind of picked each other. They chose each other, right? The perfect match. 
that's that's the reason I was saying the greatest partnership. Um, they are perfect for each other. They picked each other because both of them kind of wanted to explore the universe, right? Um, and they were brought together essentially, um, and they both played a part. And I love how you know the doctor's kind of raging and. Again, this is, you know, one of those fun moments as they're bickering. And he mentions that you've not always been reliable. And this is because, um, you know, he believes that it hasn't taken him to his, uh, you know, destination of choice um, at all times, right? And the reply to that, wow, I love the reply to that. But I did take you to the place you needed to be, right? The place that mattered, right? And you see immediately hits it hits him, right? He understands. And of course, the bickering stops at that point. And he's so excited about the notion and idea of being able to speak to the Taurus, right? It is so, it, you see just how much it means to him, of course, you know, uh, really driven home by that emotional goodbye and hello as well. Um, but yeah, you know, here you have someone who truly gets him, you know, yes, you know, some of these human companions perhaps come to understand him over time, but you know, the Tardis is the one companion that really truly understands him, right? Truly understands him. And knows him um uh yeah and you know i've got to say you know i mentioned the chemistry there's a lot of great tension even some sexual tension i think there's some undeniable sexual tension in this one uh it made for a lot of fun moments for sure now let's you know get into the whole reason he goes there in the first place uh because of the time lord emergency messaging system right that cube uh and you know it was clear right right the moment he saw it right at the moment he saw it, that he knows the meaning of this, right? He was quite excited about it. You know, deep inside, he must have known that this is too good to be true, right? Um, that there are time lords out there, good ones as well, but loneliness and regret and a lot of other feelings can be quite the motivator, right? Um, you know, there's a really beautiful and heartbreaking delivery of dialogue as well, right? Um, you know, Amy quickly kind of replies oh you you just want to be forgiven and he turns around don't we all right i felt it i really felt that um and you know that whole idea that he he could potentially get forgiveness right um this whole idea that this whole time he's been you know wanting to explain himself to someone to the time lords to anyone and then of course you know that whole notion of him coming across the master over the last few series um and finally coming across a time lord uh and how how much it hurt to lose that Time Lord as well. You know, it really drives it home, doesn't it? You know, I hope that he does get to meet Time Lords or a Time Lord or another Time Lord down the line, other than the Master, that is. Um, I really hope so. I really do. Um, now, listen, you know, uh, I have, I'm always going to be upfront. I do know about the special, right? I've seen the poster. I've seen the Blu-ray cover. I've seen, it's impossible to not see it. Right, I know that he meets David Tennant's doctor. I know that. Right, it, it, apparently it's the the big special. I can't remember the exact um, reasoning for it. Uh, I know it's something big. Fiftieth, um, I believe it's the fiftieth anniversary. Uh, but I know about that special, so I know he does kind of run into other <laughs> other time lords. But those time lords are himself, and somehow they're projected. So he can kind of meet himself or, you know, different, you know, regenerations of himself. So I know that much, right? I'm not, you know, I have no reason to ever lie about anything. I know that. And I'm going to be upfront about that. I know that. I've seen the poster. It's impossible not to see that. Uh, I feel like that's one of the most iconic um, posters or images of New Who, right? Even for people who don't know about the show, right? Uh, so yeah, I know about it. So I've always had that in the back of my mind, how those things come to be or how they're possible right let's see let's see but going back to some of the fantastic dialogue in this episode you know uh, that one uh, near the conclusion of the episode fear me i've killed hundreds of time lords and that in itself is kind of insane you know that house house right uh who i think might have been neil gaiman but you know as it kind of played on i was less sure of that uh, but you'll have to let me know um, I thought it, it could be kind of cool if Neil Gaiman himself kind of voiced it. But again, I'm not 100% sure if that's him or not. Um, but yeah, you know, him saying that, that is just chilling, right? It's a graveyard of TARDIS or TARDI. I don't know what TARDIS is. Um, he's, a, he's a Time Lord hunter, a Time Lord killer, right? But then, of course, our own doctor uh, and his reply. 
<laughs> and the delivery of that reply, I've killed them all, right? Wow. <laughs> Well, that right there is just phenomenal, right? Uh, you see his attitude and his demeanor. And then, you know, a few moments later, you see just how, you know, crushed he is, how heartbroken he is, how open he is, right? Uh, and he, re he realizes this, right? As he kind of looks at Amy and Rory. Um, but then, of course, you know, there's also great moments like, um, uh, I think he said something like, oh, you know, that's the problem, house. That's your problem. Outside, outside you're a planet. You're, you're as big as a planet, but inside here... You're just so small, you know, something along those lines. Um, but then also, the personification of the TARDIS, right, Idris, um, coming to terms, uh, you know, with this human body, right? And I thought it was a great line of dialogue there. Um, uh, are all people like this, right? So big on the inside. Wow, wow. You know, Neil Gaiman, come on, man. Of course, as expected. Uh, full of beautiful writing. It really was. Um, uh, of course, you know, I'm sure I'm not the first to say this, but imagine Neil Gaiman as a showrunner. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, listen, I know it's incredibly unlikely, but, you know, all of us can dream, right? Uh, all of us have these dream scenarios in our minds for our favorite shows and talent. Um, you would love to have attached to that show, be it actors, be it the writers, the directors. Um, and, you know, I've got to say, uh, a lot of credit should go to the director as well. He had a massive task on his hands to execute this. Um, he really did. And I think the from the technical aspect, you know, the production design, um, top-notch. You know, CGI was great. I thought CGI was great um, in those interstellar traveling moments. But, yeah, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed that episode. And, of course, you know, adequately titled, I, you know, I should mention The Doctor's Wife. You know, as expected, Neil Gaiman delivers. He delivers, you know, he does. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Neil Gaiman. Uh, you know, you've probably noticed Sandman uh, on the shelf back there. Um, you know, there's actually a Netflix show that is actually coming out quite soon, in the next few months, I think. So, you know, definitely check that out. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, you know, do that for the channel. Or I, you know, sometimes there's shows that I kind of just want to watch on my own as well, right? Um, so yeah, Sandman, I'm really quite excited about that. And Neil Gaiman is really quite excited about it. If you follow him on Twitter, right, social media, he's really excited about it. And he's really backing this, right? So to, to see an adaptation have that sort of backing um, by its author or creator, yeah, that is, um, that's good. That's, a, that's an incredible sign, right? So I think there should be a lot of hype and excitement for that show, Sandman. And there's an, there's an incredible cast. You know, you've got Charles Dance, Gwendolyn Christie, um, Tom Sturridge, right? Uh, and a lot of other great actors. But signing off on the episode itself, I thought it was one of the best. It really was. Uh, it's one of my favorites, that's for sure. But listen, it's completely possible that for many, um, this maybe didn't kind of, you know, meet all their expectations, uh, given that it is a Neil Gaiman episode, right? Um, and of course, even I knew that there is a Neil Gaiman episode, so... Uh, there must have been a lot of excitement behind this and a lot of expectation and hype behind this uh, back around the time it was supposed to happen, right? Uh, or announced that it is going to happen, that he is about to do an episode of Doctor Who. Um, um, also, you know, I should, before I kind of forget, I almost did forget, it just came to mind again. I love seeing the, the control room uh, from uh, the last era, essentially, Tenant's era, um, Davies' era, sorry. Uh, so that was a cool touch. And also speaking of control rooms, uh, there's a great little uh, moment as the TARDIS mentioned saving control rooms that the Doctor hasn't even created yet, right? From the future, essentially. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and also that kind of reminds me of another really cool aspect of this. You know, the TARDIS um, through Idris is kind of mentioning things that are going to happen or that are going to become important, right? And then they are going to make sense to the Doctor or Amy and Rory down the line as they do throughout the episode and perhaps even beyond the episode, right? Uh, that setup at the end there. The only water in the forest is river, right? And I'm sure, I mean, surely that's our river that's being mentioned there. So let's see. Let's see how that plays out. Right then, that's about it for this one. I really enjoyed that. And if you enjoyed this, consider dropping a like consider dropping some comments give me your thoughts if you're interested in full length or early access to the next episode right now consider checking out the patreon page the link is in the description or the pinned comment 
Uh, actually, no, yeah. <laughs> Description, pin comment. Also, I'm on social media. I mentioned it just now, Twitter. Uh, so if you're into that, you know, consider checking out my Twitter page. You can support the channel just by, you know, going to my Twitter page and following there, right? Um, but yeah, again, links in the description and the pinned comment. Whew, okay, thank you for joining me for this one, folks, and I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy.